Well, police in Burlington, Vermont, say a suspect is now in custody, accused of shooting and wounding three young men of Palestinian descent. They were attacked as they walked down a street Saturday night. Errol Barnett has the latest from Burlington. Authorities say three 20-year-old men of Palestinian descent, two of whom were wearing traditional Arab kafia scarves, were walking down this street Saturday night when they were approached allegedly by 48-year-old Jason Eaton, armed with a handgun. Police say without speaking, Eaton fired at least four rounds in their direction, injuring all three before fleeing the scene. While canvassing the area, ATF agents working with the Burlington Police Department detained Eaton in front of his apartment where the shooting took place. Officials say evidence found in a search of his home and preliminary investigations led them to believe Eaton is the gunman. That's pretty disconcerting. Two of the victims are U.S. citizens, the third a legal resident. They've been identified as Tashin Ahmed, a student at Trinity College, Kinan Abdelhamid, who studies at Haverford College, and Hisham Awatani of Brown University. Two of them are in stable condition, but one suffered more serious injuries. I think their intention was to be just gone five minutes. Rich Price, Mr. Awatini's uncle, says the students were staying with him for Thanksgiving when they were shot. The local police chief said investigators will look into whether this was a hate crime. They went to uh, school together in Ramallah, their best friends from growing up, and it's just unfathomable that a happy few days would end that way. And now those three friends are being treated at the UVM Medical Center, which you see behind me. The suspect, Jason Neaton, is scheduled to be arraigned today on, we understand, three aggravated assault charges. We'll learn more when the mayor and police chief address the press here soon. And just to give you a sense, Anne-Marie, on how much attention there is on this incident, the White House tells us that President Biden has been briefed on what took place here. Hmm, very interesting, Errol. So I imagine at this point we there's sort of limited information about the suspect. But did we get anything about, you know, who the suspect is, uh, how the uh, you know, police were led to him, maybe, or anything we know about the victims and their conditions? Yeah, we kind of have some details on all three, Anne-Marie. The Jason Eaton, Eaton lives uh, just a few blocks away from the University of Vermont's campus in what appears to be more of a house that's been modified into an apartment building. He's 48 years old. He had this handgun. Uh, the police tell us that the incident happened Saturday night. No words were exchanged, according to their initial report, when these three young men, as part of a, a Thanksgiving uh, trip, uh, to visit one of their grandmothers was simply walking by his house. Um, the police said that on Sunday they were able to use witness statements um, and other testimony from the victims to triangulate who the suspect was. They found his uh, place of residence, which is right next to where the shooting took place. They detained him around mid-afternoon on Sunday, and by the evening they obtained a search warrant from a judge and were able to go into his uh, residence and gather more information. And that's why this press conference later today will be key in kind of filling in all the blanks on what's so unusual. Anne Marie, this is effectively a college town, a small, you know, northeast city um, where it's common to see students running and young people around. Right. So it's very unusual that there would be any kind of random act of violence like a shooting, but specifically from someone who lives near campus appearing to um, target these young men. Right. And I imagine it's common to, you know, have international students uh, in the area. So we know there's some sort of conversation debate about whether or not this could be considered a hate crime. That's something prosecutors will have to sort of consider. Um, but just the fact that they were Palestinian and apparently is speaking Arabic and the suspect is not doesn't make it a hate crime. So what are some of the things that they'll be kind of considering to determine whether or not it reaches that level? Yeah, that's right. You know, the mayor even said it's very difficult to look at this and not think that there is a hate crime component. But police haven't attached that descriptor just yet. What we know is that 
the young men were wearing the kafiyas. These are the black and white kind of checkered headscarves, kind of a, a trademark of, of Arab uh, dress in the Middle East and elsewhere. Um, and yes, they were speaking both English and Arabic. But it's unclear if the suspect had a specific animus toward this group. And that's what is necessary in order for prosecutors to elevate it to a hate crime. So did he specifically target these young men? Is there something he said? Did the police find anything in his residence that speaks to a specific um, hate toward any specific group? I mean, just the fact that there is an ongoing conflict in the Middle East between the IDF and Hamas isn't really enough um, for officials so far but we do expect to learn more later today. And if there is a hate crime component, of course, that increases uh, potential charges as well. All right, Errol, thank you very much.